Who will be left unprotected for the expansion draft? And how much more time does Marc Bergevin have before he gets fired? This is Hockey Inside Out. I'm Adam Susser, coming to you from downtown Montreal with the Gazette's Pat Hickey, Chris Nyland, and CBC Daybreak's Jessica Rosnack. Here's what we're going to be talking about on today's show. Number one, what players do you think the Canadians will leave unprotected for the expansion draft? Number two, does the signing of defenseman Jakob Yerebek make Nathan Beaulieu or other defensemen expendable? Number three, aside from adding a top-line center, how can the Canadians boost their offense? Number four is our HIO viewer question of the week, which asks if the Habs overpaid for Jeff Petrie, and number five, Canadians don't do better in the playoffs next year. Will it mark the beginning of the end of Mark Bergevin's tenure in Montreal? Let's start the show. With the expansion draft slightly less than two months away, the hockey hotbed of Las Vegas will finally be getting an NHL team. And as per expansion rules, NHL clubs have two options in which to group players they wish to protect. Option one, seven forwards, three defensemen and one goaltender. Or option two, eight skaters and one goalie. Teams don't have to protect first or second year NHL players, they can't be selected, and any player with a no movement clause has to be included on the team's protection list. With that in mind, what players do you think the Canadians will make available for the expansion draft? Well, I think that uh, for starters, they'll probably make Thomas Buchanan's available. Uh, and the key there is whether Las Vegas will, will want a veteran like him with a big salary or whether they'll you know, go for a player with, uh, with less experience. He would certainly be a good fit there. You know, give them some instant leadership. Uh, Nathan Beaulieu is another guy who will be available. Be lots of guys on that third and fourth lines. Uh, you know, Tory Mitchell, Brian Flynn, those guys will be available. And it just depends on what the Las Vegas is looking for. The good thing for the Canadians, they only have to lose one player. And unless they lose Buchanan, the team you know, won't, won't really have lost that much. There's guys that can be replaced. Mm -hmm. I think the fan base would be happy, too, to see Thomas Placanics go, especially the way that he's performed with the high salary that he has there. Um, I think, too, that it might be a good idea that Nathan Bollier is kind of put out there because I think he's a player that has done everything he possibly could under this organization, and the notion was there when they did not play him in the last game of the, the playoffs for them. I think, I, I think, you know, one of the things about Buchanan is I think there are some fans who would like to see him go, but I think those are fans that don't understand how much he does for this team. Mm -hmm. Yeah, here's the deal. I agree with you on that. I agree Pekanek, uh will probably be the guy because of the salary and his dip in play uh, during the regular season. But he certainly come back and had an awesome playoff. Uh, yeah. I mean, it was only six games, but the guy came and he played. And during the regular season, regardless of what people think of him, he does a lot of things that people just don't see. So, but I, he'd probably be more, more than likely be the guy to uh, get picked up by them. They might be looking for a guy to provide that leadership, a veteran presence, someone who has some experience up the middle, because that's going to be a problem for them, uh, keeping the puck out of the net in uh, Las Vegas. So it's good to have a guy like that. Nathan Bolia, another possibility. Um, uh, you know, this kid has been up and down all year, very erratic in his play. Good one game, crazy the next. Um, yeah, I don't know what's going on with him. He just hasn't reached his potential, so he could be one of the guys. Okay. On Monday, the Habs signed uh, Czech defenseman Jakob Jarebek to a one-year, uh, two-way deal for $925,000. Oh, yeah. Jakob. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Jakob Jarebek. Uh, yeah. Jakob. Uh, if he comes to the Habs, the fact that he's coming to the Habs, do you think that that could mean uh, blue liners like Bollier or other No, it could, mean, it could just mean he's going to Laval. Okay. You should start looking for a house in Laval then, old Montreal for no, sure. No, an apartment in <laughs> Laval. Apartment, apartment Laval. Apartment Laval. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, that was oh, really Actually, he could get a house because he's going to be there for a long time. <laughs> <laughs> but he's not a player that's going to be uh, pushing any of those guys out of the lineup. He's more of a depth defenseman. And as uh, Mark Bergevin likes to say, you can never have too many defensemen. But he's 25 years old, been playing in the KHL. This guy's not going to come here and be the top defenseman on this team so it's really just a minor move but seeing that it is Montreal it does get a lot of attention. He's got good numbers in the KHL uh, fourth or fifth leading scorer among defensemen in the uh, KHL he's also small he's 5'11 190 pounds he's not very physical and he's not very good defensively so those are all uh, marks against him uh, he can't put the puck in the net they do need scoring he might get a look but I think uh, he's going to 
It's going to look very good in Laval. <laughs> Okay, uh, I actually wanted to ask you this before, going back to Nathan Beaulieu, if, I know he's not someone that the Habs should protect, but if he doesn't get chosen and uh, shipped away to Las Vegas, do you think that the Habs can find a proper, like a, some, someone good for him on the market? Well, in exchange for him? Anyone better than John Scott, I think, is a better move than what he's done with the guy before him, Jared Tenorti. I just, his value is not very high right now. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, that's. The Canadians aren't doing themselves any favor by when he was sitting. Other GMs around the league knows because, you know, he's someone that is disposable on the Canadians roster right now. So they do trade him. No one should be expecting that they're going to get anything big back for him. And that example I use that John Scott is what you got back from Jared Tenorti, who was a first round pick that you even traded to move up a few spots because he was a player you really wanted. And then a few years later, he's nowhere to be found. Well, it could be a deal sweetener, though, you know, looking to get that top D uh, center or yeah. a, a one-two sentiment, um, you, you know, you're going to have to trade more than just one player to get a player mm -hmm. like that. And if Bergevin is going that way, uh, it's going to be a, a player from the core group of players on this club and a player like Bolia and maybe a draft pick. It, it's something that he has been reluctant to do in the past, uh, you know, break up that core, but it's something... He, if he needs that, if he if he feels he has to get that score and he does, then he has to he has to pull the plug there. There'll always be a coach or general manager who feels that he can turn a player like Bolu around. Mm -hmm. There's always a coach who says they haven't handled him right. I can handle him. I know how to I know how to get the best out of this guy. So they'll always be there. So they'll always be able to make a deal. I think Phoenix probably felt that way about Jared Tenorti. Yeah, kind of they were like wrong. Michelle Terrian with Semin. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, also, too, uh, Nathan <laughs> Bollier's coach in the queue for the St. John Sea Dogs was Gerard Gallant. And where is he now? Coaching Las Vegas. So. Yeah. That's, that's a good point. Okay. Uh, aside from landing a top line center, what other things can the Habs do to increase their offense next season? Is that it? That's well, the well, that's it. You know, you, I mean, you need a, you need a four, you need more forwards who can score, and you have to make sacrifices somewhere along the line. Um, you know, there, there's all sorts of different possibilities. Some are are way out there. For example, you know, trading Carey Price and getting somebody back. And you know, if you look at the goaltenders who won Stanley Cups. There aren't a lot of carry prices. There aren't a lot of Vesna Trophy winners. Mm -hmm. So that's a possibility. I mean, I hate to see it happen. But at the same time, you're, you're getting to a point now where right now you're wasting his best years. And you've got to give him some help if you're going to keep him around. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's, uh, you know, I, I don't know what you do. I would, I would trade Alex Galchenyuk. I would package him probably with Bo Yu and somebody else and a draft pick maybe because... I just don't see the upside there. I, I don't think he's a center. I think he's proved that. Everybody gave Michel Therrien a lot of grief because, you know, he didn't use Alex Galchenyuk as a center. New coach comes in, and what does he do? <laughs> he not only knocks him out to the wing, but he knocks him down a line or two. Fourth line. <laughs> line or two. At the bottom. Uh, and you're right about that, Pat, with Galchenyuk. You know, he has struggled. And, uh, again, this GM got decisions to make about these players. What am I going to do here? And the only way to get that offense is you're going to have to give up some bodies. And again, not everybody's going to bite on certain players. You know, we think, oh, yeah, Bolio, he's good, good, but, you know, someone will want him. And Galchenyuk, yeah, he's good, but he can't play center. And is he a winger? Is he? And then all of a sudden, well, we'll package these guys and send them off. You know, <laughs> I, I like to think that GMs aren't that stupid, but mm -hmm. there's somebody out there. Always one. It, it takes yeah. two to tango. Yeah. I mean, you know, it's, it's easy to say, why don't you trade this guy? Why don't you trade that guy? And you hear a lot of this on talk radio, as Chris knows. <laughs> and, <laughs> and no, I'm not talking about you. you know, I'm talking about the callers and, and things like that. People call in with no sense of reality, not realizing that there's a salary cap that you're up against. And the Canadians are up against the cap as well. Yeah. And they have to get... They have to get money, have that money for Radulov. Galchenyuk has a contract coming up. I suspect that he's going to go to arbitration. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And, you know, if he's still around, he'll go to arbitration. And he might be very surprised at what he gets. <laughs> it's not going to be what he wants. Um, you've got Radulov you've got to sign. Mm -hmm. uh, Carey Price down the line. Max Pacioretty in a couple of years. A couple of years. I'm you've not worried to, about the Pacioretty yeah. thing right now, but you've got a couple of years. You've got to think about, you know, all these guys coming up. Plus, you also, you're going to sign Andre Markov. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I can't see him taking any, 
he's had the same salary for 10 years, and I would expect it will stay about the same. Mm -hmm. Okay. So there are all sorts of things that have to go into the mix. All right. At this point in the show, it's time for HIO Viewer Question of the Week. This week's viewer question comes to us from Merpupter Abhijit in Pictou County, Nova Scotia, who writes, Defenseman Jeff Petrie is in the middle of a six-year, $33 million contract. Do you think the Canadians overpaid for his services? Not what? at the time, because he was the guy that everyone was like, you need to go out and sign him when they trade for him in the midseason from Edmonton. They even talk about, because him and Carey Price, they were very close, that Price was going to be the one to convince him to come back. Yes, his play has dipped since then, but now you can't say we overpaid for him because everyone was wanting them to open up their wallets to pay Petrie. Mm -hmm. And once the contract's signed, you can't argue whether he's right. underpaid, overpaid. The contract is there. It is what yeah, it is. Yeah, too long, whatever. You know, it's just, uh, you know, it's the same thing as saying is Max Pacioretty underpaid. Uh, yeah. You know, you know there's all, all these things are relative. The bottom line is that's what the guy is making, and you got to live with it. Yeah, and I honestly, I, it, it, off year, if you will, but uh, still, he, he's a player that if he wasn't in the lineup <laughs> you'd feel on the back end, you'd really notice yeah. it. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, the Canadians, if the Canadians don't advance next year further than they did this year, do you think it'll mark the beginning of the end of Mark Benjamin's tenure as GM? I think so, because this team needs to do something that they keep saying that, you know, there's excuses as to why they can't advance. But if you look around the NHL, there's other teams who have been able to make improvements. If you look at Toronto, you look at Edmonton, they've had bad years, but now they're coming out of it and being an exciting team with a lot of potential. And the Canadians idea that they can't tank because of the city is ridiculous because if not, you'll just be this mediocre team that gets into the playoffs and yeah, you have a first round. That's fun. But what else is going yeah, on? Yeah, you can't tank. That's, yeah, come you on. just can't tank. That's crazy. That, that's ridiculous. Does it take that? Well, why why can't you tank? You can't. That's yeah. that is so. I think I think I, I don't I don't say necessarily ridiculous. tank, but I think what you sh what you could do is you could change trade your Gary whole Price focus. and trade you know, all these trade, guys and then just trade yeah, Price yeah. and start all and over let's again get the first and have a couple overall. of years of pain. Yeah. And uh, yeah, that's not gonna happen. You can't do that. You have to be uh, 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 a competitive but, team. They're gonna keep trying to do that. Let's see, Toronto it's, did it. Spot. Yeah, Edmonton but they did they, 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 they sucked for years. They've <laughs> sucked for years. They got yeah. the draft pick. Edmonton has sucked for years. They've got the draft picks. Edmonton finally got somebody in there who could pick the right people, though. That's uh, uh, mind you, and that's why they've kind of turned around. Peter Shirelli's a guy who's gone to Boston, won a cup. Yeah. In how many years? With five years? Yeah. Went to Boston. Yeah. He won a Stanley Cup. Not many GMs can do that. Now he's in Edmonton. He's got a team. He's been there, what, three years? Boy, he's made some changes. Now they're in the playoffs. This is a team that's going somewhere. Toronto, this, Toronto again, you know, changed the general manager, changed the yeah, direction. This, this city here, yeah, and Mr. Molson, I know he wants a team to be competitive. Yes, he wants them to make the playoffs. He'd love to win the Stanley Cup. But you can't put a product out in that ice and say, okay, we'll just have a mediocre product for a couple of years because we'll get some great draft picks at But no, but Boom. right now you have a mediocre yeah. product. Yeah. Well, uh, you know what? Like they, 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 they won the they, they division. They We're talking division, about the championship. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. We're talking yeah. about competing yeah. in the yeah. NHL yeah. season when you got to put fannies in the seats. And the bottom line, right, Mr. Molson is running a business. He wants, to, <laughs> wants that thing to be profitable. And, yeah, the playoffs – yeah, that's where you make a lot more money. But, boy, if you are brutal all the regular season, yeah, yeah I just think that's crazy. But those seats are crazy paid way for. of thinking. I think it's a loser <laughs> mentality. <laughs> a loser. A loser. I think, I think what happens, though, is... The, the, and nothing the, against you guys. Is the old it's just, it's is, a loser is mentality. The old, is the old adage, you have to win, you have to lose before you can win. Yeah. Well, they and, uh, lost do you have already. to? I, I think, I'm going to say we have a better team than mediocre. To me, it looks yeah. like we're always one or two players away from really making But they're never dance. getting those one or two players. That's the thing. You can always say we're one or two players Well, they're away. missing on some things. They've missed on some things. There's no question about it. And they've got some things right. There's no question about that either. Now, one or two players that... I forget who said I think it was Pierre Lebrun. He said, you know what? People in Montreal are going to have to come to the uh, realization and the facts that they do have a really good hockey yeah. team there. And it's very, very difficult. And I don't care if people are going to say, oh, Bergevin, it's hard, and blah, blah, blah. But here's the deal. It is. To juggle that salary cap and do all those things and keep and get the right players and, you know, you miss on one thing you be, or two things, you screw yourself. And maybe he's missed on something, but I, I don't think that all 
that bad off with a with a couple of decent moves. Mm -hmm. You know, we could see a different hockey club here. Okay. One of those moves has to get some strength up the center, though. Yeah, we, we all agree on yeah, that. that. I feel We've been like talking about that for years. Yeah. <laughs> I'm the resident optimist. I feel like that's possible. They maybe could make a move, get a better center. Look, look how the team changed with Radulov. You know, he made a big impact. Maybe we can trade Brian Flynn for that center. <laughs> we'll, we'll see about that. Someone will call in with that one today. <laughs> okay, that is our show for this week. We want to thank you all for tuning in at home. The panel show will be on hiatus until the expansion draft in June, but we will still be producing new content for our YouTube page on a semi-regular basis, so check out for that during the summer. On behalf of myself and everyone here at Hockey Inside Out, we want to sincerely thank you for sticking with us and watching us all year round. The show has changed and you guys have stood by us, so thanks. My name is Adam Susser. And I'll see you soon, Habs fans. Yeah.